Welcome to Insight. Today we're chatting with Maya Dillard-Smith, Director of Strategic Partnerships and Investments of Youth Uprising. Smith previously held positions with the California Judicial Council, U.S. Representative Barbara Lee, and the National Bureau of Economic Research. Youth Uprising functions as a community center for urban youth. Located in the heart of East Oakland, this state-of-the-art facility offers a variety of career education, health, arts, and civic engagement programs that transform lives. Maya has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us, and I'd like to thank you, Maya, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So the city of Oakland has had its share of issues uh, having to deal with uh, inner city uh, poverty, mm -hmm. uh, dislocation, an economic base that um, has struggled, um, and what in, in many cities has been called urban blight, particularly with the economic downturn, Oakland has been very hard hit. Mm -hmm. Talk about youth uprisings role at this time in this city uh, for youth. Absolutely, so um, in addition to all of those things, uh, Oakland also has the dubious distinction as one of the most dangerous and violent cities in the country. And um, a fair share, probably the bulk of that violence occurs in and around our facility in the heart of East Oakland. And so we're contending with a variety of um, declining social factors um, that impact the ability of the community to really be healthy and thriving and robust. And so our theory of change is really that if you can work with the hardest to reach young people who really are the culture keepers in the neighborhood, they really drive the tone and, and, and overall quality of life in the neighborhood that you can really begin to see transformative effects both on their peers and in the community in general. And so we've got a bold uh, vision and mission that is both about the personal transformation of young people and providing direct services to them, uh, in addition to impacting the systems change that absolutely needs to happen in order to better serve these kind of young people systemically. And in so doing, we believe that we will be able to transform the community um, address our public safety issues that impact um, the, the quality of schooling, the quality of businesses that we're able to attract and retain to the city, uh, and overall uh, impact the, the general quality of life for residents in, in the city. And so we really see that as core to our mission uh, and to our work, and it is the way that we move in actually working with the toughest to serve young people, young people at the epicenter of violence, homicides, the leading cause of death for young people, 15 to 24 in Oakland. Um, unemployment is pretty high among this demographic and, and growing. Uh, and we really see that our work is about providing them opportunity to not only transform their lives, but also impact the overall community. Uh, and so that's, that's really our, our mission and vision at Youth Uprising. Six years ago, seven years ago, is when Youth Uprising was founded. So describe how that, that took place. Absolutely. So we opened our doors in May of 2005 after about a seven year um, planning and construction project. Um, there was a plea from young people uh, in 1997 following um, racial, racial tensions at the neighboring high school that erupted in community violence and young people identified lack of meaningful engagement, lack of safe place, lack of um, career and education opportunities as core reasons as to why um, you know violence happens and, and what was driving it. And through a youth-led engagement process, um, Youth up Uprising was designed and we were really fortunate to get the uh, early support of the Alameda County Board of Supervisors who made some pretty significant um, capital investment uh, and, and programmatic investments. Youth Uprising is housed in a once abandoned grocery store, which I think is pretty indicative of, of the, what has happened in that community, which was once a thriving working class community that fell victim to the crack cocaine epidemic in the 80s and the 90s. And the businesses left and it, it became a hollowed out community. Absolutely, absolutely. And the county took over the facility that we're now in uh, and it was a, a health clinic that prior to our um, taking it over was vacant for several years and so it was a blighted property um, and today it is a vibrant beautiful space um, that provides comprehensive integrative services health and wellness career and education art and expression civic engagement so this is also an economic development initiative by the by the city council so this is an investment 
So, so absolutely, but I, I, I want to just really make the clear distinction that it was the county of Alameda that really put forth the core operating support who owns the building and the land and that the city has subsequently made some pretty significant investments in youth uprising. But to your point, it absolutely is an economic development um, uh, undertaking. And we operate in addition um, for social enterprise businesses because what we've recognized really quickly in our five years of operation is that for this demographic and this population, it can't be a push strategy. We can't push them into school. We can't push them into the labor force. We've actually got to have pool strategies. And so our arts and expression is not only around a youth development model, which it is, it's also the hook that draws the young people into the building so that we can provide these wraparound services for them. Because many times they're not coming for school. They're coming because they want to do beat making in our studios. But in order to do that, we actually require them to engage in programming in education and career mental health to deal with the rampant rates of um, post-traumatic stress disorder from all the exposure to violence. So it really is soup to nut comprehensive. Um, and we really see ourselves as the bridge between the on the ground work that's happening, the true work in the trenches that happens on the ground and being able to translate that for funders and policymakers in ways that not many folks can. Um, so talk about the facility itself. You you had referred to the beat making. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it's got a got quite an interesting story, yes. and and the facility itself tells a story. So Absolutely. Talk about that. Our facility is a twenty five thousand square foot state of the art facility. We've got an on site internet cafe and catering business. We've got um, the uh, a health clinic that is staffed by Children Hospital Oakland. Um, and it's the highest utilized in the city of Oakland, highest utilized adolescent health clinic in the city of Oakland. We've got a career and education one-stop that's specifically focused for young people 13 to 24. We've got a digital media arts center complete with recording studios, live band, um, uh, video engineering, um, and we also have a health and wellness practice. So we have three licensed clinicians on staff. We've got this really amazing living room space because we want the young people to have some ownership about this space um, and that space opens up to an indoor outdoor amphitheater because performance is so critical for this demographic um, dance battles music performances a whole host of things um, in the last year we broke ground and completed construction on one of the few skate plazas in um, alameda county and a basketball court so we're beginning to kind of expand our services to the actual exterior of the building. Um, it is strategically set up so that career and education is directly across from the art, uh, the Media Arts Center, and they're both strategically located in the back of the building that forces young people to take that journey along all of the programming that is dispersed through the building. And so we're really pleased with it. It's, it's amazing because we opened in May of 2005. We've got a youth membership base of more than 5,000 young people. We serve 3,100 unduplicated young people each year, and we are bursting at the seams in terms of 3,100 youth. Absolutely, that's that's an incredible uh, it is. contribution. It is, and you know our our vision because we are a place-based organization. That is, we are committed to serving the people in the place. Um, and we actually see our work as a alternative strategy to what traditionally happens with community revitalization um, projects that ultimately have, I think, the unintended consequence of displacing long-term and native residents so that when you have revitalization, there's a natural gentrification that happens. And part of our strategy is that if you can uplift and build the people that live there, that you can stab off some of the kind of um, pretty conspicuous gentrification that traditionally happens. So you're hoping to create a place that people can be proud of and that will bind people to those neighborhoods. You're Absolutely. actually trying to cultivate instead of just uplift an economic area and then have people leave and, and be replaced by others, you're actually trying to recreate the neighborhoods. Absolutely. I mean, this is really a um, rebuild effort of East Oakland and really leveraging the assets that exist there because there's tremendous community resilience uh, in East Oakland and how do we capitalize on and build on that. And, you know, I just, I must say that part of that revitalization is about um, 
retaining as many long-term and native residents and welcoming new, new residents because I think revitalization does require new energy, new blood, new investment, both in terms of home ownership and business development and creation. So let's talk about a cost-benefit analysis because these services do come at a cost. They do. And today, money is at a premium all, all around, um, whether it is uh, government funding or private funding, and I know that you have a, a combination of different funding sources. Talk about the cost-benefit analysis in very hard terms. Why is this investment the right investment to make as opposed to other investments that are also worthy? Sure. So I'll start by saying that because East Oakland um, has the severe indicators in terms of poverty, unemployment, um, violence, crime, and um, the proportion of youth probationers, um, about 40% of the young people at the neighboring high school are already involved in the juvenile justice system. 40%? 40% have been touched in one way or another. And this, the juvenile justice system is a very costly... Very costly. So on average, annually to provide a young person all of the comprehensive services that we provide, plus um, subsidized wages at about $5,000 per year, that that total cost is about $13,000 per young person. But on the back end, to incarcerate them costs somewhere in the ballpark of $100,000 per year. So either we make the early prevention investment, which is, um, you know, for some people it's a hard pill to swallow to make that kind of investment up front, or we make the back end investment. And we're making that investment anyway. So if you avoid one out of eight person, uh, people ending up in the criminal justice system and being incarcerated, mm -hmm. if you avoid one year of imprisonment out of out of eight, then you have a break-even proposition. Essentially. And, and that's just one dimension of progress. Absolutely. And, and in terms of, of the effect of uh, beyond the criminal justice system, um, is there a way to measure the impact in terms of uh, people's entry or prospects for going off of the unemployment rolls, mm -hmm. of, uh, of getting a mm -hmm. job? Talk about that. So one of the things that we have been piloting and testing over the last year is a new performance management system because we want to be able to provide those causal relationships between the interventions that we provide, the investments that we make, and the actual return. So you're measuring return on investment not in, in terms of finances, but perhaps in terms of cost avoidance, in terms of in, impacts on, on individuals? We're, we're doing it uh, both in terms of impact on individuals and, and working with some um, academic researchers to figure out how we can, can measure cost avoidance and the overall community uh, impact. So we're in the early stages of the broader kind of macro um, analysis, but we're really building the system now that allows us to track the individual level data that we can then aggregate up and do some cost-benefit analysis more rigorously. So that could include things like the improvement in, in property values. Mm -hmm. It could include uh, improvement in your tax base, yes. uh, reductions in unemployment, mm -hmm. um, uh, those kinds of, of, of activities, reductions in violence. Yes. Maybe that doesn't end up in the criminal justice system, but domestic violence and other types of violence. Absolutely. And we've grown fairly rapidly, but we're putting in place the systems that allow us to actually measure this not only for our own benefit in terms of program improvement, but so that we can offer some lessons to the field, especially around what it means to serve urban youth who have really uh, high barriers to um, you know, overall success, uh, both academically and, and in terms of employment. So viewing this, this project also as a pilot for others and as a model for others, are, are you intending to, to publish a type of uh, of, of roadmap for others to follow? We sure want to. It's part of our um, strategic plan and we are actually working uh, with a few funders now to kind of carve out what those kinds of publications will look like in terms of lessons, to share lessons with the field. But we absolutely see ourselves as both um, learners and innovators a as much as we are wanting to partner with other folks who are contending with these same issues on the ground 
funders, academics, pr other practitioners uh, locally in the Bay Area and, and abroad. And so we, we very much are involved in networks uh, and peer networks of other folks who are on the ground doing this work. Are you finding investors who are interested in investing in the development not only of, of the, the metrics but also uh, of, of this prototype model that could be redeployable in other cities? We are, in fact. Um, one of the things that's been really um, critical to why use success and sustainability is diversifying our funding, obviously, because we were we were uh, incubated as a county initiative. Right. Mo a lot of our funding early on was from uh, public systems, the the city and the county. Um, we've since diversified, and we do have um, some really core funders who really believe in our mission and our work and who are wanting to support us in this next phase of maturation into adolescence and to support the sharing of this information to the field. We've not, however, yet tapped into national um, foundation funding or pretty extensive corporate funding. And so we've got um, a robust kind of um, fund development plan that's pretty closely linked to our programmatic um, investments um, that we're hoping to kind of bring those kinds of new funders into the fold. But we absolutely see our core funders as central to leveraging and aligning additional resources to support this work. Um, one of the things that, that I want to just also share is that the $13,000 cost per unit that I, I quoted earlier is really a new model for YU. We've, we've largely over the last five years or so operated as a drop-in center. But what we've, we've recognized is the, the needs of this population are so great that we've got to have a higher dosage of services for them and higher frequency. And so we're actually been piloting in a new model that we call ARM, which is Attract, Retain, and Move. We recognize that we've been really great in terms of attracting young people. 5,000 members in five years, pretty awesome. That we've been able to retain them, that we're serving 3,100 unduplicated youth of that 5,000 membership each year. But our movement and movement in the field has been really difficult. We're moving on. Moving on. Moving on to success. Right. where there's not the recidivism that, that is pretty rampant in this population. So you want to, you want to also be, be cognizant of the potential for codependence and try to break that and, and anticipate it and break it yeah. before it, before it uh, locks in. Exactly. So what we have been piloting with some really um, important investment by core funders is a model that is about holding them intensively 40 hours a week for a full year to attend to all of their multiple needs, and then doing at least a year follow-up. So you're helping youth become accustomed to the kind of experience that they would have at the workplace exactly. or at, or at a, a college. Exactly, exactly. And this for young people, many of whom say they're 15 or 16, but they've got a third grade reading level. They've never had to get up and be routine and show up, to show up and be time. calm. And so, so much of what we're doing on the front end is soft skill development, hard skill development, consciousness raising, um, creating routine and expectations, and having both the carrot in terms of making sure that they have wages um, for their time, but also the stick, that there are consequences when you don't follow through and perform, that so much of what they also need is personal accountability. And so we're providing that in for young people for whom there hasn't been a lot of structure in their home life, and there hasn't been a lot of um, uh, adequate parenting. And so we're having to recreate a lot in terms of structure for the young people so that they get out into the real world and they're actually successful navigating um, where their rules and responsibilities and accountability and what does that look like and creating and modeling for them in a sheltered environment where they're trusting relationships that here's the expectations when you get out into the real world. Helping our youth to heal, aspire, and succeed. Absolutely. Maya, thank you so much for your insights, and thank you so much for this wonderful program. Thank you.